Good day viewers, welcome to a new edition of 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television with me, Manir Dan Ali. Our guest today is the chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, NESG for short. That's the body that was set up since the tenure of Chief Ernest Shonekan under the interim government to be helping as a bridge between government and business. And I'm talking of Mr. Olani Abdul Mumin Yusuf. Welcome to the program, Mr. Ni. Thank you and good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. You are on the verge of another, that is the latest edition of the Economic Summit Group, right. which usually happens in October. Mm -hmm. And you are having it in a few more weeks' mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. What's going to be your concern at a time when the economy is in such a dire situation? All right, thank you, and um, thank you for um, scheduling this session. So indeed, we're having the 29th edition of the Nigerian Economic Summit, um, October 23rd and 24th in Abuja, uh, <laughs> by the way. And the theme is um, Pathway to Sustainable Economic Transformation and Inclusion. And the theme was um, deliberately chosen between us and the Federal Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning. So it's always a joint collaboration with the Ministry of Budget, Budget that's and the Economic Planning. Mother Ministry for this. Absolutely. So they represent the federal government and the NESG uh, represent the private sector. And so together we work to plan the summit and together we arrived at the theme for this summit um, and pathway to a sustainable economic transformation and inclusion. And that was chosen deliberately because it's important that our economy is transformed in a sustainable manner, but also in a manner that is diverse and that is inclusive of all sectors. Uh, whether you are in the south or in the north, you are literate or you are semi-literate, you are adult or you are young, you are poor, you are rich, it really doesn't matter. We so want inclusivity. So inclusive. An economy where everybody has, everybody is um, prosperous, what we call shared prosperity. And so that's the focus of the summit this year. How do you achieve this? Because it's very lofty aims, um, both the inclusivity and the transformation. Mm -hmm. How do you achieve it in a situation where many young people are joining the Japa mm. syndrome? That is, they are just flying out of Nigeria because they feel the future is quite bleak here. Yeah, so I mean, in, so I mean, you, you, you're, 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 you're referring to two things. So first is there's migration, and I'll argue that migration has always been a, um, a factor. A, a factor. Uh, it's just that now with social media, with technology, uh, we're getting to know more about people, people living. Uh, but as people live, people do come. But we need to be deliberate about how people live, how they remain connected. And so if you, if, you, if you listen to the parties of the foreign ministry, for instance, the new foreign minister talks about 4D, and one of them is diaspora, you know, linked to its development. Mm. So a diaspora should be a vital factor of, of, of our development. And if I may digress a bit, right. the African Union, uh, about four or five years ago, said that Africa as a continent now has five Sorry, six regions, you know, and this, so it's west, east, south, north, central, and the sixth region is a diaspora. Right, and that's because they are economically active. Absolutely. I mean, they help to transfer knowledge, they transfer management know-how, and of course, they transfer capital. But from a summit point of view, uh, our goal is to get discussions going around five key areas that we think will be required to transform the economy. One is about sustainable economic growth, and what there is really about sustainability. Second is about harnessing human capital. How do we turn our 220 million to um, advantage numbers to Absolutely. advantage, instead I mean, of being a drag on instead of being a the drag. I mean, the, the youthful bulge is good, but we've got to be deliberate to turn into a demographic boom. Otherwise, it could be a pain. It could be destructive because you see the youth are usually full of energy. They mm -hmm. are not tolerant when things are tough and all of that. So they don't only do Japa. They are the kind who will be in protest Absolutely. and all the things that could 
lead to problems. Yeah, it's that that that's this generation. So you know, they, they are, they are multi generations, and what you call the Gen Z, uh, they are active, they are vocal, they know their rights, and they demand for their rights. And so it's important that we get them into the conversation, and the government also does things that will then allow them to, to be part of the solution. How um, do you get them involved in the conversation? So they have part of the summit process, right? Um, in the NESD, we have three communities of practice. One is on SME, second is on youth, the third is gender, women and co. And so there's a segment of the, of the NESG that's focused on youth participation, on SME participation, on gender participation. And indeed, November this year, we'll have a gender summit I think about how do we bring more women? How do we uh, tap this feminine gender to be more productive, not just being. How can we ensure we are clapping with two hands? Right. Right. Because this population is almost 50 50 female and male. Yes. And so we will do well if we clap really with, with um, both hands. So, uh, about the SME that you mm -hmm. mentioned there, how do you spur more development in that sector, given the way now? Lots of SMEs have been like dealt a death blow. Yeah, I think the SMEs play an important part of our economy, right? I mean, SMEs represent almost like eighty percent of employment. They represent more than forty percent of GDP. So they have an important part, right? Sadly, though, um, we we have more micros than SMEs. So the MBS did a, some survey, I think, about two or three years ago. That's the Nigerian Bureau of Nigerian Statistics. Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, um, with SMID and the SME Development Agency of Nigeria. They did a survey about two or three years ago, and the result was that we have about 41 million MSMEs. Now, of this 41, I think it was 41.7 million MSMEs. Of that number, about 96% were micros. Micro mean less than nice nine employees essentially it's a father it's a, yeah family club, business yeah for example um, i mean we had less than twenty thousand medium-sized companies right so we need to be able to grow our companies from micro to become small from small to become medium from medium to become large so that they are all them part of the value chain right a big company will require millions of suppliers those suppliers are MSMEs. And so we need to create that, that, that um, linkage. A big company will require thousands of um, what you call retailers or partners that will help to sell its products, right? Those, are, those partners selling its products, for the most part, are also MSMEs, as far as it will get to my village, to the last mile. And so MSMEs play a role in that value chain, and we just need to recognize that and ensure that as you grow the big companies, the big companies will lift the MSMEs that will be their suppliers or that will also be their retailers. But is the government aware of this? Because it appears as if the government doesn't think in that way. It's more like thinking in terms of only the big companies. When this government came, there are tax holidays for big companies and what have you. They are doing a reform of the taxation situation and all of that. I haven't had anything that will affect the MSMEs. Right. So, I mean, there the, the are a few things. Um, first is, if last year, and also, yeah, last year the Finance Act says any company with less than, I think, 25 million or so turnover will no longer pay company income tax. So that law is essentially for MSMEs. And that law is still in operations today. And so, MSMEs have their own, for want of a better word, call it their own tax um, support. And so now it's looking at tax support for other sectors of the economy. We have SMIDAN, which is the MSME Development Agency of Nigeria, that's responsible for the development of MSMEs and based on skills, so a lot of training, a lot of um, support they do for MSMEs. Uh, but, also, but, but the number they are able to reach is quite minuscule compared to those who are operating. You're, 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 you're right. And I think one area that I think is missing, in my view, is what, like what we have in U.S. So U.S. have what they call um, SBA, Small Business Agency, uh, which is the counterpart of SMIDAN. But in addition to all that SMIDAN does, SBA also does 
provide capital. And when they provide capital, it's try to procurement. So 25% of overhead procurement by the US federal government is restricted for SMEs. SMEs. Now that is huge. So if Nigerian government can also do similar and say, okay, 20%, 25% of our consuming our, of our overheads and consuming restricted to companies that have just 10 employees or that have 20 million turnover, that provides access to markets. When they have that market, then they can get um, credits from private companies, from banks, from lenders who, 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 who provide that can provide the capital. So what is missing now is really around that market creation. Um, there's a BOI scheme that this government is also still supporting where you have loan in um, single digits. So to go back to the summit itself, yeah. at the end of it all, what happens? I mean, you planned it with government, <laughs> and then do you have like to-do list at the end of it to say this bit with the business sector, the private sector will do this, the government sector will do? How does it work? Yeah. So at the end of each summit, we come out with two books, what you call the Green Book and the Brown Book. So the Green Book is a compilation of the agreements and the action items from the summit for the federal government. Um, government. And the Brown Book, we said that last year, um, is for the sub-nationals, the states. The states and absolutely local and governments. Absolutely. And so we then work with the Federal Minister of Budget and Economic Planning to make the presentation of the Green Book to the FEC, Federal Executive, Federal Executive Council. Council, so that all the ministers have it. That but is, do they like just so, listen so, to so, you so, um, so, so, so and then forget? So, so that is the first step. Now the second step is that the work of the NESG is a 365-day work. The summit is just the public face of it. We have what we call the policy commissions. We have 12 policy commissions and 45 thematic working groups. These are the guys who, on a daily basis, work with our public sector counterparts to bring to life, to execute those decisions taken at the summit. So that happens on an ongoing basis. And then at the next summit, we'll do a review. Review and, and see. So how far have we gone? What have we achieved? What do we still have um, undone? You know, we know it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so I'm thankful to all the volunteers uh, who pay to serve through the NESG and who do the work the hard work behind the scene every month, every day, um, that allows things to, to move with the, with, the, with the bureaucracy and that has allowed us to be able to um, have the successes that we have recorded. Since we are in a marathon, maybe it's a good time to take a breather and right. then resume our discussion shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. Viewers, it is 30 Minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television, and our guest today is the chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, which is organizing a summit every year in October, and this October isn't going to be an exception, Mr. Ni Yusuf. Welcome back. It is still 30 minutes, the interactive program of Trust Television, and our guest today is Mr. Ni Yusuf, the chair of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Before we went for the break, mm -hmm. we were discussing about whether it is worth all the efforts that staging the summit and then following up. Will you say over the years that there is better understanding and appreciation and implementation of the conclusions in this relationship between the private sector and the government? Definitely, definitely. I mean, without any out of the doubt, the work that we do, um, not sexy as they would say, uh, but imp required and impactful, right? I, I, and I can share a few um, examples, right? In the last two, three years, there have been two major legislations of which the NSG has played a critical part um, in the formation. The Petroleum Industry Act, right? The PIB becoming yeah, the Yeah, the one PIA. which took more than a decade Absolutely. to eventually conclude. Um, so we, I think like about, with the, about 12 or so years ago, 
we formed what we call NASBA, the National Assembly Business Environment Roundtable, um, with the National Assembly, the Senate and the, and the Rep, and also with the Nigeria um, Bar Association, the Session on Business Law, and NASG. So we all came together to form that mm -hmm. NASBA Association. And NASBA has been working with the National Assembly to review 115 legislations. 115? That the private sector believes are hindering economic growth and hindering private sector development. How far mm -hmm. have you gone? So about 13 or so of those have been passed, passed into law and, and signed. And, and signed. And so one of them is the PIA. Um, Another one is the CAMA, the Company Allied Matters Act, the 2020 uh, review. So it takes a while. So PIA took more than a decade. But because it's required, because it's, and we are consistent with the advocacy, um, we, we were able to, 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 to see it through. And so we know that reforms take a long while. We know that policy advocacy needs to be consistent, and that's what the NESG is really um, about. The, if I could share on that one, the NIPC, and you have promotion commission. Yeah. And um, the NESG was pivotal um, to the creation of that act, and of course the creation of the of the of the of the of the of the, of the, of the commission. Uh, Telecom helping with is helping to drive investment. Right. And it, the way to look at it is, is a cup up full or have empty? Have empty yes. And, and what a friend of mine says is the cup is always full. One half is water, the other half is air. Right. right. And if the NESG and many others were not doing this advocacy, we can only imagine what the situation would be. be. So can we turn to the economy itself? Because mm -hmm. all this talk is about the economy. Yeah. And the Nigerian economy is in a very bad shape. Mm -hmm. The federal government is, has borrowed beyond imagination. And there is talk of even more borrowing in the new administration. What could be the way forward from your perspective? I right. mean, we have a forex situation, we have so many situations that are just like taking the life out of Nigerians. Yeah, I mean, so globally there is a crisis. I mean, it's a global economic crisis, you know, high inflation, climate change, etc. So whether it's US, it's Canada, it's Europe, it's a global crisis. But we are concerned and about the, the one here. And then there's now our own local flavor. Yes. So the point I'm trying to make is the global environment is bleak. Very, very bad. Then we now have our own local issues, right? Um, insecurity remains a big issue. If you are not secure, I mean, there's only production so much production you, you, you can do. Um, FX, big, big issue. Macroeconomic stability, high inflation, uh, inflation rate, poverty rate, FS rate, interest rate, those are, those, those, those are big and issues. And to complicate it, you had a meddlesome Central Bank of Nigeria at a period right. until recently. Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the cash policy um, affected everybody, yeah. right? I mean, farmers didn't get imputes or they didn't get the cash to buy imputes, and which is why we're suffering Food high food inflation today, because if you didn't plant in January, there's nothing to harvest um, the, the, this, the, the, this period. Multiple FS windows breeds corruption. Um, allocation by individuals breeds favoritism, etc., which are the top decisions that this new administration has taken. But we are meant to believe almost that when you do this, it's like a magic wand. Things will just change, and then they have change for the worst for most people. Naira is over a thousand to the dollar and it's still going up even. Right, so when you harmonize, you also need to ensure there is adequate supply. If there is no supply and you continue to have high demand, there's only one way that the price will go. The price will go up, right. So in addition to harmonize, which is the first step, we also need to put in place policies and initiatives that will help to drive up the supply of FX and also whatever can help to tame the, 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 the demand for FX. So in layman's time in Nigeria now, we need to export more crude, Absolutely. sell it and hopefully hope that the prices is the, I mean, the, right. The, the lower game fruit is crude oil 
but we need to do more of exports. So exports also bring us FS. And we need to diversify beyond crude oil and gas. Yeah. But there was a time. We've been talking about that for decades. Yeah. But so now, like they say, necessity is the mother of um, invention. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not investing in schools, and then everybody decided to be schooling offshore. We are not investing in hospitals. Everybody decided to be going for medical offshore because the FS was there. Now the FS is no longer there. So we'll now be forced to invest in our own education so that the bulk of us will, will, will school local. We'll now be f forced to invest in our health so that we'll um, take good care of ourselves. Now people will still travel offshore, but it doesn't have to be a huge drain on the economy. If we do more of exports, whether it's agri um, agricultural products, crops, animals, or it's solid minerals um, that we have in abundance that we can export in addition to the crude oil, then or, sorry, the other bit that we can export more in the most structured manner is services. Export Nollywood, export music. What about what, even our capacity? I mean, we have the human resource. If it's well trained, we could export it, some of it without necessarily being based abroad. And uh, is, it, is it not something that could also be considered? Oh, absolutely. I mean, so if you look at the country, countries like Philippines, like India, they've developed an incredible outsourcing sector where companies in Europe in US outsourced um, to those companies in India in Philippines and co and they get effects from that so Nigeria has no reason not to be an outsourcing um, center we speak good English our time zone is fine and we we are hard workers right so we just need to create a trusty a, a, a trust environment that will allow the offshore companies to, 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 to do that. And we've seen that happening with the fintechs. Nigerian fintechs are serving the world. Yeah, the financial technology yeah. company, the all yeah. the, 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 the startups, all the startups, waves, space waves, yeah, they, 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 they're serving the world. And as we open up based on AFTA, the African Free Continental Trade Agreement, we then realize that the 200 million market in Nigeria is small. There's a 1.3 billion market across other 50, 54 uh, or so African countries. And that for me gives me hope that Nigeria can be the regional hub um, for us to serve the ECOWAS region and also the, the Central Africa region at the, in, in the near time. What about this fixation with foreign direct investment? Because we seem to, even the forex issue is targeted at that the devaluation the all many things are just targeted at that and then meanwhile in most economies is the smes that actually are the engine room is that a good strategy do foreign how is there any country that has been developed by foreign investment so we must be open to the world um but we must also lift ourselves up and I think there are many examples, right? I mean, Dangote Industry, Boa, Olam. I mean, Olam started from Nigeria, right? So there are those examples. We glow in the telecom industry. Maybe we don't have a lot, but there are examples of local businesses that are bringing in money that are investing in Nigeria. And so we need to balance both. We need to encourage the local investors, but we also need to be able to attract foreign investors who most times bring more than capital. They bring technology. They bring management know-how. They also bring access to their own market so that you can then export to, 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 to their market. And so for me, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. In 30 seconds, can you tell me with your heart, that's your other heart as the former chief executive of the essential mm -hmm. there's the accounting firm mm -hmm. if you are the one making the decisions what are the two quick things in 30 seconds that you will do for nigeria so i will um try and improve crude oil supply reduce the leakages reduce the theft so that that can bring in effects almost immediately i also will look for ways to invest in human capital which is education, health, not short term, but we've got to make that investment in human capital so that our people um, can, can be productive. Then I'll look for ways to improve productivity, which is about automation, right? And of course, 
security um, it's, it's critical. We really, you can't thrive if you don't have a secure and a cohesive country. So we need to be a united and secure, peaceful country. Thank you very much, Mr. Olani Yusuf, for coming on this program. Thank you. Viewers, that's the end of this edition of 30 Minutes. Keep a date with us.